Well, it's been about a month since the release of the Quest 3, and so far it still has a lot of problems. And if you're wondering why a support ticket hasn't been answered yet, well, the reason is that Meta is pretty much overwhelmed with support tickets. They can't get through them all, and frankly, they don't know how to answer all the really known questions because they don't have a fix for them yet. I know this because I got in contact with one of the moderators at the forums, and I'm not going to disclose the user, but it was quite clear that the reason that we had not gotten any response is because that they're simply scrambling to try and fix the many issues. Right now, their wireless PC issues probably isn't their highest priority, as the standalone experience is the main focus. Now I'm going to cover the updates on the Wi-Fi issues, so stick around for the end for that, uh, or go down in the description to the timecode. But first, let's address why Meta's overwhelmed. Again, this is because the headset was rushed out the door, without any proper extensive quality of assurance. Like the fact that they did not send a single dev headset to any network's hardware suppliers to make sure that the headset was without any issues. And then probably didn't extensively test their elite battery strap either, because they are failing dramatically. It's not exactly clear how it happens, but it seems like if you let your head strap run out of juice, it won't reconnect after you recharged it. And since people like me are reporting on this and advising you to return your head strap, they are getting a huge amount of refurb units because of return policies. And yes, I also encountered this problem. So I also had to return my strap and get a new one. One thing you should try before returning your headset is actually pressing the reset button on the back of the strap. I know that 50% of you probably didn't do this, but it should not be connected to your headset, it should not be connected to a charger, but it should be fully charged. And then you press this button and you hold it down for 12 seconds. That should reset your head strap and probably make it work again. But if it doesn't, well, return your head strap. Give them another reverb unit. And software is also failing across the board. Have you tried playing Walking Dead yet? Well, if you want to get past the intro, you have to skip it. Unless it's going to crash the minute the campfire scene is over. That's just one example of the many crashes that we've seen across the board. Because they're working with new hardware here. And probably not tested that extensively. And then there's the microphone. I said in the last video that the microphone is in the connector port for the dock. Well, that turned out to be wrong. The truth is even worse. So shout out to Blunty for figuring this out, uh, because he found two MEMS microphones inside the headset watching iFixit's teardown, and they are placed right in the nose area, meaning that the main place that your actually microphone is actually listening is through this air intake vent in the bottom of the mask. Uh, so that's even worse. Uh, you should take a look at this video. He has uh, uh, some uh, suggestions of how you can actually improve the sound. Not fix it, but improve it drastically. So go, go and watch that. When it comes to dead pixels, that's still an issue. People are reporting dead pixels all, all over the place, and a lot of people actually returning their headset and getting a new headset back with the dead pixels. And the reason for that is because the dead pixels are mostly found in certain batches, meaning that the supplier you might be shopping from might have a bad batch. So hopefully in the future, there will have more extensive quality assurance looking for this, so that future headset batches probably won't have this issue. Hopefully. And then there's a the case of the battery life, which I didn't mention in my last video, but the battery life in this is not two hours, as they tried to allude to in their presentation. Uh, right now, I probably got an hour without the battery strap on it, and the, the reason for that, I think, is firmware related. It's using a lot of sensors that it doesn't really need uh, when you're using it. What you can do to actually improve this drastically is just turn off 120 hertz on your headset. Now this might seem as counterintuitive because you want the best quality, but really, unless you're suffering from motion sickness, you, you have to have a really good eye to spot the difference between 90 hertz and 120 hertz, unless you're comparing them side by side, of course. So I don't think that's really that much of a deal breaker. But they also put in some extra battery saving options here where you can turn down the power of the processor and uh, you can completely just stop using pass-through. But that sort of defeats the point, doesn't it? Then you can just use Quest 2. 
But that is for my main issue, which is, of course, the Wi-Fi stability. Now, a lot of people hasn't really noticed this, and if you look at Steam's, uh, Steam VR's uh, headset uses, you can see that it's still pretty low. So you can actually see that the Quest 2 is still at 40%, and the Quest 3 is at 0.15%. So that's the reason you don't hear that much about this, because one, a lot of people aren't using it as a wireless PC headset, and two, the people who have noticed it aren't really going to use it in Steam because it's not working. Now I have a lot of videos on my channel covering this issue, but to give you like the general overview, the problem is that the megabytes per second are fluctuating, meaning that you won't get a stable signal. It will keep fluctuating up and down and go drastically down, giving you a lot of latency errors and essentially making it useless as a wireless headset using some routers. It doesn't affect all routers, but some routers, especially the AXE and the AX routers, and for my sake, I only use TP links. I don't know why, but I just really like them. Uh, and uh, right now they have proven to me that their customer service is off the charts because the minute I uh, reported this to them, I got in contact, a personal contact with a TP engineer who wanted to investigate this to figure out what was the issue. And he has taken it upon his as his personal mission to figure this out. And I'm so grateful and impressed with TP Link's dedication. Well, Meta has not responded once outside the forums. Now, TP are not going to be able to fix the issues, but they are going to be able to identify the issue, and they're actually working really hard to find a workaround while Meta is working on fixing this. But the problem will only be 100% fixed as soon as Meta fixes the negotiation rates and the package losses. You don't know what that means? Me neither, I have no idea, but that is as far as we've gotten working with the forum users and TP-Link forum users like uh, Virtual Omnipresent, who did an intensive test with four headsets and monitoring their Wi-Fi performance, clearly showing that both versions 57 and 59 had major communications issues with certain routers. Now TP-Link now has their own headset to test with, and, and when I sent them this video, they sent back and confirmed. Our wireless research department found that it might be the case that Quest 3's wireless connection strategy rate is more aggressive in terms of speed reduction. Once it encounters wireless package loss or interference, it will reduce the negotiation rates on a large scale, thus affecting the actual wireless performance. In other words, it's actually unnecessarily overly sensitive, especially when interference is basically impossible at 6 GHz. We've tested the Quest 3's version 57, we haven't gotten 59 yet, so far, almost all our routers, from Wi-Fi 6E to Wi-Fi 7, with the QCA and BCM chipset. Thanks a lot for your updates about this article. We're also very focused on this issue, and we'll respond rather quickly as soon as we get the new firmware. Thanks a lot for your valued feedback and understanding. Reading the Steam HMD charts, you can tell that a lot of people have not started using their Quest 3s as their main PC headsets, and that's probably because it's very buggy. So I hope that we can get an update for version 59 soon that will fix this. But stay tuned on my channel and I will keep you updated. Thank you guys so much for watching. Remember to like this video if you liked it. Subscribe if you want to. I'm really close to 10,000 subscribers, so that's really cool. And I'll talk to you next time.